So, uh, as I stated a couple of days ago, I did a video on Luke Robitaille, and I stated, you know, I just got a random pack of hockey cards and open them up, told my wife to pick a couple of cards. The second card she picked was uh, Michelle Goulet. And I was like, all right. And last night I had her pick another one. <laughs> I said, this is a Hall of Famer too. People are going to think this is on purpose. So the the second career video is, is Michelle Goulet, who was one of the most proficient left wingers when it came to goal scoring in the 1980s. And very proficient goal scorer, very consistent. And really, in all honesty, it's part of that that makes a person a Hall of Famer. So when you talk about what determines who is and who isn't a Hall of Famer, normally that consistency, where it's not just one really, really great season, there's consistently some greatness shown over four, five, six years in consecutive uh, fashion. Now for Goulet, he's interesting because he's picked number 20 overall in the 1979 draft. Now, he had played in the WHA prior to that. He played for the Birmingham Bulls. But he was an underager, so he was able to go right back into the draft. Birmingham was not brought into the NHL, so into the draft you go, and he went 20th. And he was very glad to be drafted by the Quebec Nordiques because he felt that was his home t hometown team. 78 games played in Birmingham, the WHA, 28 goals, 30 assists, 58 points. I think it's fair to say Quebec knew exactly what they were getting in this situation. And therefore, not a surprise when 79-80, as a rookie, he's in their lineup. 77 games, 22 goals, 32 assists, 54 points. Very respectable. So while Winnipeg got the short end of the stick uh, when it came to the entry to the NHL and Hartford fumbled its way around, both Edmonton and Quebec seem to have things figured out relatively quickly. 80-81, uh, the Quebec Nordiques uh, player, Michel Goulet, 76 games, 32 goals, 39 assists, 71 points. So 10 extra goals his second year. You'll notice there aren't any tiny magnets on the board because I don't have any for Quebec. I'm not making a bunch of little tiny Quebec magnets either. Uh, he makes his playoff debut in the NHL with four games, three goals, four assists, seven points as they went out early. But 81-82, the momentum starts to pick up for the Quebec Nordiques and for Goulet himself. 80 games, his first 40-goal season as he scores 42, has 42 assists for 84 points. Very consistent. Uh, he and Peter Stastny, really good chemistry between the two of them. And in the playoffs, much the same. 16 games, 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points as the Nordiques went all the way to the conference finals. He also had 6 shorthanded goals that year, which was first in the National Hockey League. So, 82-83, he really breaks through big time. 50 game, or 57 goals in 80 games. He also added 48 assists for 105 points. So his first 100-point season, first 50-goal season, and then in the playoffs, he had no points in four games. So Quebec falls there, but he's a second-team All-Star, and then he follows that up with an even better season in 83-84. 75 games, 56 goals, 66 assists, 122 points, and in the playoffs, nine games played, two goals and four assists for six points. He is a first-team All-Star. Again, left winger. 16 game-winning goals that year to lead the NHL. So 16 game-winning goals in the regular season. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. So we can have the debate about, oh, 50 goal scorers from the 80s. There were, 80s, there were tons of them. But game-winning goals, I think that's an impressive total. 84-85, he only plays 69 games due to injury. Doesn't matter. He still gets 55 goals, 40 assists, 95 points. 17 games played in the playoffs, 11 goals, 10 assists, 21 points. So again, they went to the conference finals. He's a big part of that. And Quebec, maybe if they had won a Stanley Cup in the 80s, who knows, right? But they didn't. 85-86, uh, 75 games played, 53 goals, 51 assists, 104 points. In the playoffs, he plays three games, has a goal and two assists. He was a first-team All-Star that year. 86-87, as close as you can get to 50 goals. He played uh, 75 games, once again, 49 goals, 47 assists, 96 points in the playoffs, 13 games played, 9 goals, 5 assists, 14 points, and again, he's a first-team All-Star. But things start to turn sour for the Quebec Nordiques. And Michel Goulet, it doesn't affect him that first year, but eventually it does. And, and whether it's also a matter of that core getting older for the Quebec Nordiques, whatever it is, Quebec starts to really fall in the standings. 80 games played in 87-88, 48 goals, 58 assists, 106 points. He is the second team All-Star. No playoff games that year. 88-89, as now Quebec falls into 
what would be a long period of, of rebuild. 69 games played, 26 goals, 38 assists, 64 points. So that goal scoring consistency, minimum of 42 goals between the 81-82 season and the 87-88 season, and that's gone. So still almost a point a game, very impressive totals, but we go into the 89-90 season, which is a complete nightmare for the Quebec Nordiques. And this is where the Stastny's are going to be gone, and Goulet's gone, and they're just trading guys out. So he plays 57 games for the Nordiques, 16 goals, 29 assists, 45 points. Keep in mind the Nordiques won a grand total of 12 games that year. And then the unthinkable happens. He gets traded to the Chicago Blackhawks. He was traded with Greg Millen and a sixth round pick in 1991 in exchange for Mario Doyon, uh, Everett Sanapas, and Dan Vince Lett. And if you're going, who? Yeah. That's, that's how the Nordiques were being run at the time. And it's part of the reason why Lindros would be like, man, I don't, I, don't need to, I, don't, I don't need to go there. 813 games played as a member of the Quebec Nordiques, 456 goals, 490 assists, 946 points. What stands out to me and stood out to me at the time, he didn't score his 1,000th point as a member of the Quebec Nordiques, nor his 500th goal. That bothered me. And as a Nordiques fan at the time, this whole era was really, really frustrating and hard to get through. Now, he goes to Chicago, plays eight games after the trade, four goals, one assist, five points. Plays in the playoffs, 14 games, two goals, four assists, six points. He is no longer the goal scorer he was here. That's done. And the following season in Chicago, 74 games, 27 goals, 38 assists, 65 points. He's not a bad player by any stretch. The 50 goals are gone. He's still nearly a 30-goal player. Now, 91-92, the goals drop off a bit more. 75 games, 22 goals, 41 assists, 63 points. He plays nine games in the playoffs, gets four goals, three assists for seven points. 92-93 season, really drops off for him. 63 games due to injury. 23 goals, 21 assists, 44 points. Plays three games in the playoffs. That would be the last time he appeared in the playoffs, had one assist. He only played 56 games in his final season. 16 goals, 14 assists, 30 points. His, his career was cut short, though. He went headfirst into the boards against Montreal on March 16th of 1994, and that would end his career. He ends up playing 276 games as a Blackhawk, 92 goals, 115 assists for 207 points. In his career, 1,089 games played, 548 goals, which is 30th overall in the NHL's history, 88th on the assist list with 605, 55th in points, with 1,153. So he ends up having to retire. He retires January uh, 26th of 1995. And on March 16th of 1995, which was one year to the day after the career-ending concussion against the Montreal Canadiens, his number 16 was retired by the Quebec Nordiques. So uh, it is a shame that his career has ended where it is. But he goes on to, to become a member of the Colorado Avalanche organization, and he gets his cup rings there. Never got to a Stanley Cup Finals as a player. But in 1996 and 2001, he gets Stanley Cup rings as the Director of Player Personnel for the Colorado Avalanche. So, big congrats to him on that one. And he got into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1998, which is right in between those two cup rings, and he was inducted the same year as Peter Stastny. So they went in together, which is kind of how that should work. 1984-1987, uh, he also played on the Canada Cup teams. Uh, prominent as well on those teams. Had some ice time with Wayne Gretzky and showed that he was one of the premier players in the league, especially, again, at left wing. So he also has gone on to do scouting work for the Flames and the Ducks, and this is where it's kind of interesting. I don't see him on the Ducks website. I can't find that he left the Ducks organization last year. I saw that he was scouting with the Ducks until last year. Couldn't find an article saying that he left the Ducks organization and he's no longer scouting for them. But I'm assuming he's no longer scouting for the Anaheim Ducks. And he said as well in an interview from about a year ago that when he's in the city of Quebec, people still recognize him. And there are Nordiques fans that would that really honestly, you know, ask him, you know, about getting the Nordiques back. And he also states that the Quebec Nordiques, he'd like to see them come back. Now, as somebody who has both a white and a blue Quebec Nordiques jersey, I fully agree. I am fully on board that the Quebec Nordiques should come back. Do I think they will? No. And I've, I've stated in previous videos why I don't think that's probably going to happen. But 
It's It honestly was a great era. He was a huge part of it. And it is a shame that they didn't end up winning a Stanley Cup in the middle of all that. And then the absolute collapse the team went through, uh, which just seemed to come out of nowhere at the time. But uh, Michel Goulet, one of the best goal scorers on the left side uh, in the NHL and ended up in the Hall of Fame. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.